So welcome, thank you so much for coming along tonight. And um, I have picked, I don't know how I'm gonna get through all this in an hour, but I'm gonna give it my, my best shot, all right? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing a bit of cooking and then I will go to the Thermomix and show you round. Cause I know, um, well, Marie, you haven't got yours yet, but you've had a quick little look. Hamish, I need to show you and the others have got them. So that's okay. Um, but welcome. Um, and uh, might as well get cooking. And then, as I said, I'll show you some things along the way. So the first thing I'm actually gonna make, because today, in case you didn't know, is World Chocolate Day. Now I have a chocoholic daughter and I said, of course I know it's World Chocolate Day, <laughs> but I'm making some um, cookies in honor of World Chocolate Day. So I'm gonna swap my um, screen to my other one, if I can find it, there it is. Okay, so um, these are paleo chocolate chip cookies. And I'm just gonna get started with start cooking here. Preheat your oven to 350 Fahrenheit. Now, for those of you who are new to Thermomix, um, that's obviously, it, it, it's not Celsius. So I'm very lucky that um, one of my customers once said to me, oh, it's roughly half, so I've got it on 180. Um, but this is an American recipe. We can ex access recipes from all around the world on our Thermix, and it automatically goes to that um, uh, measurement. So we're imperial at the moment, and normally we are metric when we're looking at Australian recipes. Okay, so line two baking sheets with parchment paper. What I have done is um, I've just put one of our oops, one of our baking very well used um, baking mats onto a tray. Anything zero waste. If you don't have a baking mat, parchment paper is really good because that's recyclable. Okay. Now I'm putting, before I do this, so it says one ounce of coconut sugar, but I'm actually going to go to the next step um, after that one. Seven and a half ounces of almond flour because I'm actually going to make the almond flour from my almonds. So I've got all these almonds. I'm going to take the lid off. I'm going to tear my. Um, Scales. There we go. Here's damn it. And pop my lid on. I'm going to save the recipe. I'm going to just come to the home button here, which is going to bring me back to the home screen, which I'll explain about a little bit more um, a little bit later. And I'm just going to turn it up to speed 10 for 10 seconds. Now, you may have noticed, I actually didn't set the time. I watched the time counter. If you are ever doing this manually and you need to cook, you're going to cook, you need to set the time first, otherwise it will not work. But Angie, you might want to repeat that because we lost you. Oh, sorry? Just repeat that last bit. You, you okay, did. sorry. So um, I let, the, I let it, the, the time count up with that. However, um, if whenever you're cooking, if you're cooking manually, you need to set time before temperature. Otherwise, if the time's not set, it won't heat. But it will also give you an error message saying that there is no time set. Okay, so there are my almonds. 10 seconds, speed 10. It's for almond meal. I'm just going to pop that into a, into a bowl here. And then we'll go back to the beginning of the recipe. So this is one of the nice things about having two bowls. Um, I've got two machines and three bowls and four recipes. So I'm um, just going to use the same one here but sometimes you know you might be part way through a recipe if you don't read it first which I'm likely not to do and find that actually need to should have done something first so second bowl is, is really good for that all right so I'm going back to my saved recipe and I'm going to go back to um the beginning all right so my one ounce of coconut sugar that's my coconut sugar it's a really dark color pop that in Smells amazing. Now I'm going to pop the lid on. 15 seconds, speed eight. So all it's set the time. All I need to do is turn it up to here. Okay, 
Okay, a little tip, you can stop the noise just by touching the screen. You don't have to use the next button. I'm gonna go next. And now it's gonna ask, well, I'll just show you what it's done. So all it's really done, it's like with any sugar, it's just, it has just um, blitzed it up and made it um, a bit finer, okay? So now I'm gonna add my, add back in my um, almond flour. Then I've got baking baking soda, which is baking powder basically. And I've got, oops, and then I've got that. I've got cinnamon. So in here I've got the baking powder, I've got the cinnamon, and I've got some salt down here. Oh, I think there was flour there somewhere as well. So I'm just gonna <laughs> pop the flour in as well. Oh yeah, so it was um, uh, it was, oh, I've got the name of flower, but I'll look it up in just a minute. Let's do this. Let's keep going and then I'll check it. Oh, hold on. All right, up to speed four. So it's really just mixing everything. So that's a quick little way to check um, what the next ingredient is if you need to in a recipe. You click on those three little dots, you go recipe detail, and I was able to check that it was actually tapioca flour. All right, so I come back up to the top here and I'm going to continue. Done that. Transfer to a bowl and set aside. Um, if anyone's got any questions, please pop them into the chat box. Yes, thanks, Irene. The bottom of the screen. If you're on iPad or an iPhone, you just have to move to the other screen. Thanks. Okay, so all the flowers are all mixed up. I'm just going to do a little bit of a thing around the edge of the bowl here. Just going to get that all mixed up. All right. Now, it says lard. So I did a little Google on what I could use instead of lard. And I have um, coconut oil which is also paleo. So paleo basically means no grains and um, no dairy. So my coconut oil is fine. Next, put the lid on. And it's gonna melt that for two minutes. See, it set the time there. It's going up to 140, whatever that is. And um, I, all I have to do is turn up to speed one. Okay. Now, whilst it's doing that, I'm just going to turn back my other, turn on my other thermix, and I'll start showing you a couple of bits and pieces from here. Oops, hopefully this won't be too glary. <clears throat> yeah, you could, Vicky, if, you, if we would just wouldn't melt it. Okay. Um, ghee is a good substitute too, Mandy. Yes, absolutely. Oh, the ghee, the ghee in the thermomix is amazing. It's All so, right, so it's, it's so bad. It's so yum. <laughs> it it's tastes delicious. like caramel for those that haven't made it yet. <laughs> I, I could eat it with a spoon. It's so delicious. Um, anyway, anyway, ghee is good for you. And it's got high smoke point, so it's good for, um, for cooking. All right. So if you were doing the things manually with this, You've got your time, you've got your temperature, you've got your speed. Whichever one of these is large, you turn up with the silver button over here. All right, so I can turn my, whoops, I don't want to turn that one on. I'm just going to turn my time up. Turn my time up here. My temperature goes all the way around here to 120. All of that is on a thermostat. So it's going to go up to the temperature and click off. Okay, just like your heating does. If you wanted to steam in here, you would need to have it on Varoma temperature. Now, um, and when you are steaming, it is generally, you are generally using the Varoma. And I'll just put the camera back a little bit further so you can see what the Varoma is. Okay, so the, that's the steaming thing that sits on the top. It's called the Varoma. It has a tray in it and it has a deep section here as well. So it means that you can actually be steaming some chicken or some fish or something up the top here and partway through add some rice. Uh, sorry, add some vegetables. And um, if you, 
and there's a lot of recipes where, where they also have rice cooking in the um in the in the simmering basket inside the bowl so you've got the whole meal cooking through this layered way uh, we'll go back to the cookies. Yeah. All right, let's have a look in there. Oh yeah, see my, my coconut oil's all melted in there now. Now, honey. So um, we have the most beautiful honey. It's actually from East Gippsland. There's a little tiny little place um, by the side of the road that um, sells honey and um, called the honey bee or something like that and we've driven past there a few times at the beginning of the year and every time we come away with about six kilos of honey it's really good value as well as being um, I, I'm not I'm not the honey fiend I would say that is Andrew who is the honey fiend um, and he eats lots of it okay oops not quite Vanilla extract. All right, no vanilla extract. We'll have to go without that one. Pop my lid on. You can see how easy it is to use. It's just um, for 20 seconds, my honey. Andy, what's the name of this dish? I'll find it on. It is um, paleo chocolate chip cookies. Thank you. Add reserved flour mixture. So that's just literally um, mixed. That's my coconut oil and the honey in there. I do find when using using a thick honey, um, you know, if you're doing, uh, then sometimes a little bit of heat's involved. But that was to, to really um, make it nice and soft and liquid. But that one, because the bowl was already hot. Um, it's fine. Okay, got chopped chips. Yeah. They're going in. And it said chopped pecans. I realise I haven't chopped them, but that really doesn't bother me. Put them in. Okay. We're done. Ten seconds. Speed three, and it's on reverse because we don't want to chop anything up. It's um, it's just going to stir. Okay, scrape down the sides of the bowl with a spatula. So so it often um, asks you to scrape down the side because it can push stuff up on the side there. Next, I'm going to give it another mix. 10 seconds, speed five, reverse. Mixture into balls with a small ice cream scoop and gently drop. So there's my mixture. So I do have an ice cream scoop here. I'm just going to try this and see whether it's, it's going to work. Um, so I'll just um, put this here. Oops, there we go. So I'm literally going to just um, put those out, just do that. I'm not going to do all of them because um, we've got a lot more to get through. But I'll just bake a, put a couple in to bake. Was I was talking to someone the other day, and they said um, they made something in their Thermomix, and the um, the mixture was so good they couldn't even bake them; they had to eat it. Now I could be a lot fancier that, but as I said, I'm a bit strapped for time, so I'm going to um, just do four. So, Mandy, just a question. 
Manchester. So how does that mixture feel? Does it feel soft? Yeah, it does feel soft. Right. So so my maybe refrigerating it might help to shape it. Okay. Just just a tip. Yeah, okay. Um well it's not super soft, but it's um I might just have to cook them, Irene. Yeah. And I'm, I'm almost, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how they turn out because otherwise so they're not going to be from, done from a tip perspective the fats yes. will solidify if you pop it in the fridge so it just makes it easier to shape yeah yeah okay well that's what they look like All they're right. going to be delicious they are going to be delicious okay so i'll put the rest of it aside and i'll finish that off later actually i could put the bowl in the fridge couldn't i and i'm ready Oh, nice. Yeah, in the fridge, no problem. All right. So that is um, the first thing I want to show you. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you was going to be on this machine. And um, I'll just quickly finish off explaining about this. So Varoma temperature is a rolling boil rather than being um, than being on the thermostat. So, um, so it just means that you, you're going to get the steam you need, whereas if you didn't have it on that, you would lose steam every now and then. Um, that little symbol there means that the blades are going backwards, they're on reverse, so they're not going to chop, that means it's going to chop. And just very quickly in the bowl, you just have the one set of blades, uh, and um, you can take it apart really easily, oh, it's not, not as easy when you have a brand new one, um, the one set of blades. So the blades go forwards chopping and reverse stirring. I'll get the next thing going and then I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to find my recipe just by going up here. I've put it into my weekly planner. I'm going to click on there. I'm going to go into my week. And here we are. You can you can tell us the name of the recipe. Irene, being Greek. Oh, quick heroes with Sadiki. Thank you. <laughs> Um, great yeah. question, Vicky. Vicky's asking if the blades ever need sharpening, Randy. Yeah, do you, you can answer. Oh, um, so generally, no. So they're actually designed to be um, slightly blunt when you feel them so that you can go through them. Obviously, um, they, you can damage them. So um, there may be a time where you've put something in there and sometimes packets of things contain rocks or pebbles in them. So you've got to be obviously a little bit careful. So they can break. Um, very rare. I've had my Thermomix, or my three Thermomix, four Thermomixes, I've lost count, um, for about 11 years. So I've never had any issues. But I always check everything. So when you get buying a packet of, you know, um, beans, just go through them, make sure there's no stones and things like that inside, which can potentially damage your um, your blades. But otherwise, no, I haven't changed my blades in 11 years. So still going strong. All right, so this is going to, let me see where it's going. So that, that's going to cook for two minutes. That's so just onions and the, um, and the olive oil. And so we'll come back to this one and I'll get some, the next thing going. I feel like multitasking. So, you know, remember I said about the three little dots here to check out the rest of the recipe. You can also cancel your recipe there too. So cancel recipe, yeah. Okay. So, but the, the, the Greek hieros, hieros, well, however you pronounce it. It's um, hieros, hieros, hieros. Hieros. Uh, it is or as the Americans say, gyros. <laughs> yes, well, I do. Must be American in me somewhere. That's what comes naturally. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's basically, it, it is some, some meat and it's meant to be pork, but I'm doing chicken. And, um, and you serve it with the tzatziki. So what, and then, or says to serve it with flatbread. So I'm just doing these really super quick flatbreads. Start cooking. Uh, 350 grams of bread flour in. Now bread flour is a really strong flour. It has extra gluten in it so that it can hold onto the shape, um, which isn't, doesn't matter so much with this recipe, but um, Irene is our bread um, whiz. I'm sure she can explain why you need a strong flour. I use um, I use strong flour when I want to get um, 
we obviously want to get the stretch. Um, you need to do that with, with bread flour. If you try and make bread with plain flour, you just won't get that strength. You won't get that structure. So you just won't get the volume. Um, so when you add the yeast, it needs to be able to expand and you can get that with a, a higher gluten flour. Um, I'm just going to keep going in the background here. Running my yogurt. Um, so yeah, please use the right flour when the recipes call for it. Um, now I actually made, funnily enough, um, we had a bit of a cook-off competition this week. So I changed one of the recipes for profiteroles. I used bread flour in that as well. So if you've bought, um, uh, there's a lot of um, Ferguson Clare. They sell lovely eclairs. Um, it's got quite a thick um, eclair um, texture um, in the pastry. And that's because they use a bread flour as opposed to a plain flour, which gives you a thinner, a thinner crust. So um, definitely try different different flours when you're using your recipes. Um, you can certainly swap some. Would never use bread flour in a cake. All right, so I'm just gonna finish this up and then we'll go back to our meat over there. Um, so I'm just putting in, what am I putting in? A teaspoon, a teaspoon of baking powder. A teaspoon of salt. Put that myself out a teaspoon. And half a teaspoon of sugar. Good. Good. 15 seconds on speed six. I don't know if you noticed, but like the, the lid is held in place by these arms. And if the lid is not in the right place, then the arm and, and the arms can't come in, it won't start the machine. So you've got little, it's all sort of balled up there. It's asking me again to scrape down the sides. Uh, and another little tip is never to actually tap the top of your thermomix. Two reasons. One is because the scales are in the feet of the thermomix. And the other is, even though you probably don't think you're tapping very hard, if you keep tapping, then you can make a little bit of a dent in the bowl and then you upset the integrity of the lid with the, um, with the bowl. And it's important to have integrity of the lid with the bowl because if you're using it to blend a soup or something, then um, you don't want everything coming out. So this is now the kneading function and it's gonna knead for a minute. And whilst it does that, I'm coming back to the other, other machine. So that was our onions cooking. Okay, explain about this. So that's I've got chicken, not a big poor pizza, so I've got chicken. And um I'm gonna put that in. But you can see it's got a whole lot of spices on it. And I'll I'll show you what they are in just a sec. And that's in there. Oh, what done my spatula. Would you like me to read them from the recipe, Mandy? Sorry, yeah, go on. Sure. Okay. So in the spice mix is chili powder, ground coriander, ground paprika, ground cumin, garlic powder, dried parsley, dried oregano, dried thyme, ground cinnamon, and some salt. Thank you. You obviously got the recipe up somewhere. I did. I've, I've already loaded it on Cookie G just so I can show everyone the recipes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I didn't. I, I missed it. Um, what about the pita bread? What recipe have you used for that? Oh yes. Uh, so, so oh, sorry for the bread. For the for the breads. Yeah. The for quick the yeah. So blend right. free flatbreads, as you say? Quick flatbreads. Oh, quick flatbreads. Kind of yeah. So it's just asked me to spread the meat out. So I've sort of pushed it out and around there. And then it says, this time it's going to use high heat. And high heat is only available um, when you're 
throwing yogurt all over the floor. High heat is only available in guided cooking. Um, but what it is, it goes up to 160 degrees. And when you are using high heat, you need to have the splash guard on and it will tell you to put the splash guard on. So that, that's exactly what it's telling me here. I then have to click done. And if that's going to cook for six minutes, that little symbol means it's the high heat symbol. So what happens with high heat is it's hot enough to uh, caramelize onions, to brown your meat. You can also use it to make caramel. You can use it to make honeycomb. So uh, and as I said, it's only available in the guided cooking because it is very specific and um, they have weighed out, they've worked out what um, quantities you need to have in there when it's there. Okay, so that's on there. We'll come back to the other one. Next one, flatbreads. Okay. There we go, that's all mixed up. And tip dough onto a lightly floured surface and bring together. So the bread mat is one of the um, current purchase um, offers. So we have a bread mat and a bread tin. I'll show you the bread tin in a minute. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear the sizzling? Maybe not, um, but but this one is, see how um, how it's gone to, no, okay. Um, but you can see how the lights have turned red. That means it's over 60 degrees, which it will be. All right, so I'm gonna put my bread mat down here. Lift my thermomix out the way. So this, um, this quick flatbread recipe that Mandy is using, um, you can actually use it for, for a quick pizza dough. So it's got no yeast in it. So it's pretty much make it, shape it, and pop your toppings on and pizza done in about 10 minutes, I reckon. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah, that's, that's why it's not quick. No, that's why it's quick because you don't have to let it rise at all. Okay. Now a little tip, whenever you're getting your bread dough out, you turn it upside down. And this part here on the bottom of your, is, is the bottom underside of your blade. So you give it a twist and that will actually help get everything out. If you can't get everything out that way and you've got stuff stuck around, then you put, put it back on and you go to um, turbo here. And oops, it's not it's going to tell me with an error because there's no lid on. But, um, but what, what turbo does is it pushes everything off the blades and cleans the blades for you. Obviously we don't need to do that at the moment. All right. Okay, that's in my recipe. What I'm going to be doing, bring together. It's always difficult when the bread guru is watching you. <laughs> it's it's awesome. You're doing a great job, Mandy. <laughs> I'll have to upgrade you from apprentice. All right. Um, what have I done with the other spatula? Got it out on purpose. All right, so I'm just going to divide that into eight. Whenever you're using a bread mat, you have to need to make sure that um, you don't use a, a knife on it because it does have silicon in it. I mean, it is a silicon bread mat um, and has little fibers in it. You don't want them. Um, shape each into a ball. Now I have learned from my, actually, you'd be proud of me, Irene, had a um, CE on the weekend and I showed them how to shape, shape the rolls and do all this. So not that I'm doing a good job with this, it's different dough but um, to, to, to push up there and then bring it all around so it all look nice. Fabulous, well done, I'm impressed. Anyway, I'm just gonna do one because again, let's save a bit of time and roll the dough into a circle. Now I forgot to bring my, um, just go and grab the um, rolling pin. This one's a bit of overkill for this little tiny thing, but I will just um, use it. And Irene tells me always you need to keep rotating so you end up with a circle. I should probably just push that back together a bit there. It will. So, as in, in regards to technique, I'm not the best person. But that's um, looking good. You're a bit off camera, but that's okay. Just pull it back closer, a bit closer towards you. Okay. No, no, they're, they're, they're actually, that's it. That'll do. Yeah. Okay. 
So if you are buying, you know, Peter Pockets and that sort of stuff from the supermarket, honestly, you saw how quick that was. In less than a minute, you can make your own and have them frying. Like, it's literally minutes. Um, and they do have a bit of nasties in them. So, you know, this was nice, fresh ingredients. They're going to taste far better than anything out of a packet, that's for sure. I'm going to pull my um, cookies out. Forgotten about them. They're on the dark side, but they um, but they look good on the um, All right, so um, so uh, in a minute, I'm going to get Irene's going to show you Cookie Do, which is our recipe platform that we access through the screen here. And when while she's doing that, I'm going to just cook this. Um, we've got. Oh, doesn't tell me how much longer I've got on that. Um, I'm going to make tzatziki in there, and the other thing I'm going to make in here is a really quick salad. So I'll just get this out of the way. Um, First, put it over near my stove. Um, it's on the stove. I'm not sure if you can see here. Can you see all that steam coming out? That's the high heat cooking um, uh, that, that meat. Amazing. All right, um, so I'll just finish off the bits here, the other functions of the thermomix. So um, I'm just going to read, we'll just finish off this recipe. It says, heat a skillet or griddle pan and cook the bread for one minute each side. Simple, there you go, done. Okay, so when I swipe this way, I get access to a whole lot of the functions. I've got my scales here, one gram increments. I can put something in, I can tear, and I can keep adding. So you only need this set of scales. You can put a bowl or something on the lid and tear and just keep adding things in. Okay. We've got the dough function. We've just seen that. That's the kneading function. The turbo I explained to you. Free clean. This is fantastic. A litre of water, um, drop a dishwashing liquid and you choose which clean you like. So there's a dough mode, um, universal, fat or caramel browning. If you're doing the browning one, you use um, white vinegar, not um, dishwashing liquid. Every function has a little information thing at the top here. So you can read the instructions for that. And then you can tick, don't show, but um, and you can get out of it there, but you can always go back to it there. So the pre-clean is fantastic. We've got an automatic blend. The other really great one here is the egg boiler. So again, your information here, it tells you up to a litre of water, up to six eggs in there directly in, uh, and you choose how you like your eggs. So, you know, if you're having breakfast and you want a boiled egg, and you might go, I like a medium soft boiled egg, you pop it all in, you just turn it up to medium soft, walk away, it'll tell you when it's done. Um, I love that one, that's fantastic. Kettle mode, so you can actually, you know, heat up, you can, um, herbal teas are not meant to be served at 100, not exactly sure what they are because I, I just have my kettle boil. But you can change um, the temperature here if you want to um, heat your water to a different temperature. Warm up mode, heating soups, thicken mode, rice cooker, fermentation, slow cook, and sous vide. I just use in guided cooking. But basically, your thicken you're going to use for sauces, you're going to use it for custards, um, bechamel, um, cheese sauce all those, yeah, um, hollandaise, all those sorts of things. Um, the rice cooker, there's so many, there's a, lots of different um, grains that you can cook um, using the rice cooker mode in here. Um, and again, I just, they're, they're on cookie do, we'll show you some of those. Fermentation mode, so you can make your own yogurt in here. Um, slow cooking and sous vide. If you're gonna do those, it's best to have a thing called the blade cover, which I'll see if I can grab in a minute. Um, it just covers up your blades so that um, your meat, when you slow cook, you know how your meat gets really soft? If you didn't have the blades covered up, it would shred your meat. I mean, sometimes it's really great that it will shred your meat, but not when you're slow cooking and you don't want your meat shredded. Uh, and the same with sous vide, that just gives you volume. So sous vide is when you're cooking something in um, a bag, plastic bag, and it cooks at a much lower temperature. All right, so that is, that's that. And then if you go the other way, you literally go straight onto the internet. It is Wi-Fi, it is our smart connected kitchen. Um, and you can start searching for recipes in here. And Irene will show you a little bit more of that in a minute. Um, 
just thinking. Okay, so I could go in here, let's go, um, 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 what will I do? I know what I'm going to do because this is what we're actually going to make. Five, oops, hang on. Five. It's always difficult doing upsides. Traffic light salad. Okay, so I can just do that and get bring up my recipe straight away. Um, but I have to clean a bowl before I do that. So we'll just come back and finish off the the meat one. Then I might get Irene to um, show you cookie do whilst I get a bit sorted. All right. So um, uh, in the meantime, you peel and do see the cucumber, which I have done. That's the tzatziki. We've done the um, um, we've got our meat. I'll show you, it looks amazing. All right, this is just serving serving for two. Um, then it's asking me to put the measuring cup in. We're talking about let me throw the yogurt all over the floor again. Okay, it's gonna it's three seconds speed to reverse. Okay, now that really did do an awful lot. And the reason for that is because it is quite hot. Um, so it does say you can prolong it if you want to. So I am going to turn it up a little bit longer. Um, and I'm going to. So when you're shredding meat, it is four seconds speed for reverse. It hasn't shredded it, but it's given it a really nice mix up there. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put it into, I've got a, a one litre thermo server, which is one of these bowls that keeps your food um, warm or hot or cold for up to two hours. I just had a bit of boiling water in there before putting it in a while ago. I'm going to dry that out and put my meat in there. And so, oh, That was amazing. This is my tomorrow night's dinner. Okay. Okay, we'll pop the lid on that. Warm. Next, transfer to a bowl, we've done that bit. One garlic clove. Now, I might actually use a different bowl because this bowl is hot. Um, bear with me one second. Right, garlic. Um, I got a whole lot of organic garlic um, quite some time ago, so I've frozen it and um, had to peel it and free freeze it. So it's a little bit soft, but anyway, that's all right. I'm going to pop the lid on. Five seconds, speed eight. So it's just basically spat the garlic around the sides there. I'm just going um, to chop it all up. Next, add the reserved cucumber pieces. So that's what I did with my cucumber. I just peeled it, de seeded, chuck those in, and they're done. Two seconds on speed four. Straight down the sides again. Smells pretty good. Next. 
Now it said 250 grams of quark, which is a German cream cheese or sour cream, but I missed the sour cream thing. I'm just going to use yogurt, which you can use anyway. So, uh, sorry, so 200 grams of that. So I'm just going to pop the yogurt that didn't end up on the floor. Now, with all these um, recipes, you can alter them. So if, you know, if you're not dairy and you didn't want to do this, you can obviously do something else. Um, and there are, um, in one of, the, one of the books that we have, it's a vegan book and it gives you alternatives that you can use. There's a vegan sour cream, a cashew sour cream. All right. So um, tea, um, sea salt, just put a big pinch of that in. And it says the dried mixed herbs. Now, this is my herbs that I used before and that's what I'm going to use. Put that in. I'll be totally wrong, but anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's the beauty of cooking at home. You can do whatever you like. Exactly. Thanks, Ari. I was thinking that, you know, wouldn't be very Greek. So transfer it into a serving bowl. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand over to Irene and she's going to share her screen and show you some information about cookie dough whilst I um, fry my little um, um, flatbread and clean a bowl. Thanks, Irene. No problem. Can everyone see that? And we're in the right place? Good. Yes? Hope so. Um, all right, so Cookie Do. When you log into Cookie Do screen right at the beginning, um, they generally put in the newest collections or the newest recipes. I've got some stuff that I've personalised. So they've picked some dishes for me, which, you know, you can see that I've been playing around with some almonds and there's some interesting stuff that I've never tried before. So there's just suggestions. But they've also got our latest recipe. So our 20th anniversary cookbooks just come out this month. And you'll start to see lots of stuff on YouTube, on the Facebook pages. Um, there's already stuff on YouTube in terms of making some of these dishes. We have the amazing challenge of making Christy Tanya's 20th anniversary showstopper. I think it takes like, I don't know, six days to make. Um, it'll probably take most of us double that. Um, but there's something as simple as an ombre cake, which is, um, you know, colouring different layers. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. So, you know, definitely check out this collection. Um, when you get a chance for those that have got it already. Um, so in terms of personalising cookie dough, that's this whole profile business. So you can do that from the top when you go into your own personal login, but there's, it's also on that main screen. And they also list, you know, the most cooked dishes. What are people cooking at home? Um, the vegan fruity dream, you know, it's a dish we've been cooking and making for our customers for so ever since um, Thermomix came out. So definitely worth giving a go. Uh, and again, this is some of the new recipes they're showing, which are down here, which is called Let's Create Something Incredible. Okay, right up the top, when you do go to your explore icon, you click on search. I've set it up so that my Thermomix comes up with all English recipes by default. So this will cover recipes that are um, in every country that's using Thermomix in, in English, let's in, uh, I guess, English language in um in their country. So if I click on filters, you'll understand that. So when I go all the way to the bottom of my filters, they talk about um, English. If I remove that, I could then just choose the Australian recipes. Um, I could go down to Canada, go down to, let's have a look. We've got, I think, um, we've got the US and the UK. So if I do that, They've now been selected as I scroll back up. They're in here. That's my 8,400 recipes. To get out, to, to not have to do that and to just look at my or English recipes, I can just choose English. And it's giving me 8,854. Oh, slightly more. So there's obviously some English recipes in some of the other countries. So when I show those results, I'm able to look at all those recipes. So when I look at, as an example, 
um, if I look at profiteroles, because they've been living, breathing profiteroles for days now, you'll see it come up three or four times because that's doing it in each of those countries. That doesn't bother me, but if that bothers you, um, you can just limit yourself to Australia, but you're actually limiting the amount of recipes you're looking at. For instance, Mandy's cooking those dishes today, which are off one of the other countries' websites. So I, I, I can live with this. I think it's worthwhile doing. So that's recipes. So there's so much to choose from. Um, you know, I've actually, one of, one of my favourites is the uh, coconut chicken curry. So coconut, really easy. You can obviously search for this directly on the screen. Um, chicken curry. Um, so the creamy coconut chicken curry. Again, it's coming up in a couple of countries. Absolutely delicious. Definitely worth cooking. Um, and the great thing with these recipes is that you can modify them because you are cooking at home. So if you're not a huge fan of chilies, leave them out. Um, but I'm going to cook, I'm going to add this recipe and I want to make this on the weekend. So I'm going to add this to my week. I'm going to make it on Saturday. So I'm just going to choose Saturday the 10th and I'm going to save that. So that's as easy it is to, to build dishes that I want to cook. I can also create collections. So I'm going to create a collection and I'm going to call it Irene's, Irene's favourite curries and save. And I've created that collection and that recipe is now in that collection. I'll show you where to get that in a minute. But essentially from go back to explore, click on search again. That was recipe. So guys, there's so many there. There's basics um, like your pizza dough with, with yeast. That's Korean fried chicken. There's just so much to choose from. Um, definitely do lots, spend lots of time looking at eight and a half thousand recipes. Um, there's also something called collections collections of cookbooks. Now, again, because I haven't filtered this, this is just every country. So I'm just going to click on filters. I'm just going to look at Australia for the cookbooks. That's got 132 results. It gives you the most recent cookbooks first. So this is obviously part of our new cookbook, creating something incredible. And then you can view all the recipes within that. I can save this, I haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna save this book. So that's gonna be part of my collections under my recipes. Um, but there's some lovely stuff in there that you should really you know, have a look at and hopefully um, make. Um, Keisha's, Keisha's on tonight. She's actually making the Kirsten Tibbles um, caramel chocolate mousse cake, which we're all excited to try as soon as she finishes it. Um, Danny Valance Basque cheesecake, the amount of um, feedback this gets, I think even Mandy made it recently, is absolutely phenomenal. So it's one of those cheesecakes that people keep coming back for again and again and again. So lots to choose from within those books. And again, so you can save a book, you can save a collection. Go back to explore again. I'm just going to click on search. And this time we're going to look at articles. And again, I need to just filter for this, I'm just going to choose Australia again. I absolutely love this area. And particularly if you're not a confident cook, or even if you are a confident cook and you things you just haven't mastered. Um, this lovely lass is a pastry, pastry whiz, and she's actually they've actually recorded all these videos that you can watch and to show you how to make um, short crust pastry in the thermix, um, how to make it by hand, how to roll it out. Um, how to line a tart ring, blind baking. Um, there's a recipe for quick puff pastry, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, you can knock that off in about an hour. Um, and there's things like um, decorating, decorating the tarts, etc. And really, really important if you are having issues is pastry troubleshooting. And a lot of it has to do with temperature. So um, there's some fantastic stuff in there. So definitely worthwhile giving it a go. So let's go back now and have a look at my week. So in my week, I've added the recipes that Mandy's made today. So they were in my cook today option. So when you click on that recipe, you can click on add, add to my week. The other thing I'm going to do is add it to my shopping list because I don't have or I want to see what ingredients I need for that. Go back to my recipes. Oh, pardon me, sorry, back to my week. That recipe is now added into my shopping list. So it's in here. I'm going to remove this because I've already bought the things I needed for my mushroom risotto. And 
when I click on show ingredients, it actually shows me all the ingredients that I need for that recipe. So when you are doing this, you can go through, and that's exactly what I do. I just go through and say, well, what have I got already got in my cupboard? I don't need baking soda. I already have some. I've already got my coconut sugar. Um, I need to buy some almond flour. I need to get the pecans. Um, I'm not, I've already got tapioca flour. I'm not going to use lard. I've got ghee. I've already got my honey and so on. So you get the idea. So that basically becomes your shopping list. Down the bottom, you can add additional items. My favourite during quarantine is the lucky, lucky dip, toilet paper. No one can find. So toilet paper gets added. So that's now my shopping list. Just going to remove the salt. But essentially what you can do is go straight into order ingredients. Now, I don't necessarily order from, from Woolworths all the time, um, but I can definitely use this. And as I'm walking through, because this is actually an app on your phone, as I'm walking through the supermarket, I essentially just tick those items off. Or if you are an orderer and you'd like to get your stuff bulk delivered, you know, every fortnight or every week, depending on the size of your family, um, there's a link directly to Woolworths. Um, nothing, no, I haven't heard whether or not we're going to get Coles or Audi or those other ones on it. Definitely at the moment, it's limited to Woolworths. Hopefully we'll see some other brands. When it loads up, you'll see things um, on there and it allows you to swap. So almond flowers on there, you chop chips, the um, vanilla extract, McCormick's, et cetera, all the other bits and pieces that I wanted to, to do. In here, it couldn't find the toilet paper. Maybe they're out of stock. <laughs> Um, and you can find a product. So it links, links you essentially back into, into the Woolworths app. So that's brilliant. So you can go from, you know, end to finish. But what I do love is that you can plan your week. That's the whole point of this weekly planner is I can add the recipes that I want to make. You know, Mandy's made this today. You know, I'm making this on Saturday. I can fill in my blanks. And by doing that, you can actually build your shopping cart which is fantastic for reducing waste. Um, one of the things I like to do is if I'm going to buy something in bulk because it's in season so let's say i've found some really cheap apples um, i'm going to make some tarts etc i'll make two or three dishes out of that you know one bag of apples for instance so um definitely worth worthwhile um, if you're trying to maintain a budget um to look at those dishes and i'll show you how to do that so when you go into explore and you click on search it allows you to do so many things with your filters so Obviously, you can choose this type of dish you're going to make, whether it's a starter, a soup, main dishes, etc. As you scroll down, it allows you to choose ingredients. I'm going to choose carrots because I've got a bag of carrots that I want to use. So it's actually added that in now. And automatically, it's brought up 302 recipes. Or just before I click on that, I want to show you what else is in there. So if you are um, looking for keto recipes, I don't think you know, carrots and keto just don't match, but somehow there's seven results there. So that's how we see what comes up. Um, you can also then limit it by time. So if you've only got, you know, 15 minutes to prep and you've only got 45 minutes to use, you can do that. Um, you can choose how many people you're feeding. The star ratings, I think we're all, you know, we can taste food as we go. So you don't necessarily, I mean, we're nice to choose five-star recipes all the time, but just, you know, a five-star recipe to one person might be a one-star to someone else. So I don't, I personally don't use the star system too much. And I also don't limit myself unless you've got an old model, which I assume nobody has here. Um, and we've talked about the, the country. So when I click on show results, that's now given me the seven ketogenic recipes um, that I can make that have carrots included. So um, can I say this easy satay chicken is divine. So please give it a go. Um, steam, steam carrot and zucchini tagliatelle sounds divine as well. A little bit of lemon juice. Um, there's a stir fry, et cetera, et cetera. But you get the idea. So basically the carrots are in, um, you know, fermented carrots are in those recipes. So it's a really good way to use up ingredients before they go to waste in your fridge. Um, can I also just point out, um, sorry, I need to get rid of carrots. We're going to get rid of ketogenic diet. I'm going to leave the English in there, but I wanted to show you the vegetable stock paste. For those that um, are new to Thermomix or are not making this in their Thermomix, you should. So we've all had um, celery sticks that have gone a bit wonky. Um, and generally, even the, sometimes the outside ones, the first part of the celery can be really woody and really difficult to use. All of that stuff, you know, tops and tails of my carrots, 
um, the, the bits that I can't really eat um, with the celery, they all go into my vegetable stock paste. A vegetable stock paste will last four months refrigerated. You can freeze it to extend its shelf life even further. Um, and to be honest, once you've made a risotto using a vegetable stock paste, you will never use a stock cube again. The flavour is so much better. So strongly recommend that you do that. Um, is there anything I haven't covered, Mandy? You've done an awesome job, thank you. Wonderful, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, all right. So um, I'm just gonna finish off. Um, I've got some of my cookies out, I'm not putting the rest in until I can watch them properly. because I'll, so. I'll just answer this question for Hamish. Yeah. How many Thermixes can you connect to your cookie do account? Maximum of five. So you can share it, you can share a cookie do account if you want to. Obviously, yeah. if you're doing menu planning, it makes it really hard because you're all crossing over each other. Um, but certainly if you've got multiple thermomixes in your household and you want to share it across the machines, you can do that simultaneously, but it's a maximum of five thermomixes. And Sorry, Mandy, you, to you. when you purchase a TM6, you get, well, first of all, if you haven't used up the 30-day free trial, you get that. And then as soon as you sign into your cookie do account on the screen of your TM6, you get six months. So you start off with seven months. And then after that, it's $49 a year, which is less than your Netflix and your Spotify and all those sorts of things. And we keep getting new recipes added all the time. All right, I'm going to quickly finish off with a little salad, um, which I've lost now. So I'm going to go my week, exactly as um, Irene showed you before, I had put it in here. Here we go. It's the five second traffic light salad. I've got 200 grams of carrots. So I'm just gonna put those in. Okay. 200 grams of red capsicum. So I've just got all this here going in. Let's cut in, you know, reasonable size chunks. I don't have to cut it up too much. Uh, wet fingers 200 grams of broccoli and um, I have used the stem as well so um, we're, we're a bit of a zero waste lot a slot here so I'm um, just trying and someone actually told me um, she she speaks this to her kids and she says it's broccoli money so they all fight over it I thought that was pretty cool um, so all my broccoli is going in I've got lots of that more money um, that's that and then I have um, 150 grams of apples I always just cut mine like that so I'm just chucking that in 30 grams of sunflower seeds they're here pretty good um 20 grams of lemon juice one teaspoon of honey and some dijon mustard they're all mixed up together in here Put that in the top there next Sea salt. I know it's going to say pepper, and I know my husband left it out. Um, Vicky, this is the traffic light salad. Um, he left the pepper out for me, but I can't see it, so I'm just going to keep moving. Put the lid on. Five seconds, speed four and a half. That delay with opening the arms after the recipe is a safety feature. And it's particularly important when you're cooking um, and you, oh my gosh, that smells amazing. Smell the Dijon and everything. Um, but it's, yeah, it's particularly important when you're cooking, it just lets everything settle. Oh, hang on. I think I've forgot lemon juice. I've just eaten it. 
Here's the lemon juice. Pop that in. Just give it a quick little. Um, I'll just go on reverse because we've done all the chopping. So this is this is great actually because I can come back here. I'm gonna so I can alter this. I literally just want it to go to mix um, mix for a couple of seconds. I'm gonna go on reverse and I'm just gonna give it a quick little stir around. Okay, that stirred my lemon juice in. Here we go. Look how much sun there is. And he's so fresh and he's so beautiful. I'll give you a much better view in a minute. Um, um, Vicky, I don't know if you've made the beetroot salad. Equally delicious. So not bad for five seconds. Yeah, pretty amazing. All right. So um, it smells divine, let me tell you. So there we go. We've got the five second um, traffic light salad. We've also got our flatbread and our, um, our chicken and our tzatziki. And then, as I said, they're a little on the dark side, but the cookies, but there were four, if you remember, I ate one last year. <laughs> as Irene was doing her thing and they're actually really delicious. So, um, on your menu. <laughs> so, so we've done all of that in just over an hour. Um, I'm going to change screen. Um, use. Trying to change my view. Okay, so um, one last thing I just wanted to show you, it's not to do with cooking, but as I mentioned, um, the current gift with purchase is the bread mat that I showed you before, and it's also this beautiful bread tin. So the bread tin has a lid, which means that you can make square bread, perfect for your toaster. And that and the bread mat are a gift with purchase at the moment. Um, the thermomix is 2269. It is going up on the 20th of the month. We don't know what to. We're having a little competition, in-team competition, to guess what we think it's going to be. But um, it's obviously not going to be insignificant. Um, various ways you can pay, but um, most of you have got them. It's only Hamish who doesn't, so I can talk to him about that anyway. Um, so thank you. Has anyone got any more um, questions? There's our beautiful food from, from tonight. Um, anyone, any questions, anybody? You're welcome to come off mute and ask if you'd like. I'm going to stop recording too and then we'll...